All right, guys, in this video, I wanted to start going over some of the power circuit slash contactor. I kind of feel like I can't just go over the contactor without drawing a little bit of the power circuit. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and explain that this is our contactor, but this is a contactor with a lot of parts on it. This is our auxiliary contact up here. This right here is our overload. And then this is the actual contactor or motor control right here, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through each one of these things and just kind of explain it. Um, first thing I wanna point out is that it's all removable. All of this thing can be pulled off. So if I take it and you see on our auxiliary contact, there's a little clip right here. If I pull this clip up and I slide it off, all of a sudden my auxiliary contact, whoa, 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 whoa. Now, before I get into the parts of that uh, contactor, I kind of want to draw the power circuit. That way we can kind of jump back and forth and you can see where the power circuits use using that contactor, okay? So power circuits are pretty simple. They're pretty much a, a contact, uh, an overload, and a motor, all right? So we're gonna go ahead and we're just gonna start here. We're gonna draw a motor symbol and we're gonna work up from there. So our motor's gonna be just a circle with an M in the middle. Next, we're gonna have three leads that come off that motor because our motors are gonna be mostly three phase. It's possible that you could work with something else, but more than likely, it's gonna be th three phase, 480. Now, these ones will be labeled as so. T1, T2, and T3 right here, okay? After our motors come off the leads, we're gonna then have the overloads. Now the overloads could be drawn as a resistor, a fuse, or it could have a these funny looking little C-shaped things. So and two, there are two, two C's um, kind of going opposite of each other. So they kind of look like this, just like that. Okay, so I'll try to link in a uh, description that's a little bit better than this one. So this is our overload. Now remember the overload would be used for if the motor was jammed up or it just had a short and it caused it to overheat and then it would just kill that circuit. That way we didn't like blow up the motor or something like that or start it on fire for more than likely. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna put an arrow over here for overload. And then from the overload, just a second, let me draw that a little more equal. From the overload, we're gonna come up and we're actually gonna go to the contacts of our, um, of our contactor. So those will come up here and those will be drawn as a normally open contact. Okay? And if you guys remember that this is the symbols for a, a normally open contact and if it had a, a line drawn through it like that, it would be considered a normally closed. I'm going to clean this off and we'll go ahead and start. So now it's gonna come off those normally open contacts and we are gonna relabel these to be a little bit different. It's gonna be L1, L2, and L3. And that's gonna make up our incoming power. Now, from there, we're gonna start working on our control circuit. Now, these are gonna come off of one circuit over here and it's gonna come off another one. I don't know why I didn't L3, didn't, it didn't need to be that one, but it could be any one that you want. And over here, we're gonna end up starting our, our control circuit. But for right now, this is all we need. So right here, we have our contacts for our contactor. For our contactor, and we have our overloads. So next, we're gonna get into what, where the coil is actually energized to cause it to come on. But first, I would like to go ahead and we're gonna step back and I'm gonna continue tearing apart that contactor and I'm gonna show you how those auxiliary works. Even though we're not quite to the control side where we're gonna be using that auxiliary contact, I'm gonna show you where this contact is at and I'm gonna show you where this overload is at, okay? And then we're gonna go through and we're gonna wire it, okay? All of a sudden my auxiliary contact is separated. The auxiliary contact is just a bunch of switches and it's kind of neat because it's got that uh, a schematic right on the side and you can see that the little pull line is changing all of these switches. So if you look at this you can see that we have two normally closed and two normally open and it also refers to the number. So a, one thing you could do is you could take a multimeter and you could actually test this or you could just look at the schematic. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take these leads and I'm going to plug them into the terminals here. So I'm going to push one right into this guy and I'm going to go ahead and tighten it on just so I don't have to hold all this stuff and I can show you guys. I take this one and I'm going to plug it into the other side. Go ahead and do that. As you can see, I th if I take terminal 54 and 53, it should say normally open like that right there. But if I look on the side, I can also see that it's a normally open switch, okay? So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip my multimeter over here onto ohms. Let me check that. Ugh. Ohms, and then we're just gonna adjust it up to find the continuity setting, okay? So right now, if I take this, this little black button right here is a little tester switch. So I take it and press it down, all of a sudden I can see that my switch is making contact and my buzzer is going off on my multimeter, okay? Now how, it, how this actually works and it's gonna, is on the back side, there's this little nub, and I'm not sure if you can see it. Yeah, this little nub right here. And that's gonna connect into this little nub right here, okay? And what happens is when the contactor is energized, it's gonna pull this nub and connect the switch. Okay, so we're gonna use this switch to build a lot of different circuits. So I'm gonna go ahead and move on. Okay, so back to the contactor, I have my overload here that I'm gonna go ahead and remove. So you can see that we have three terminals, one, two, three, and then three terminals, one, two, three. These are for the power circuit. Now, what we're gonna do is this, this is actually in line with that power circuit. So we're gonna go ahead and unscrew these. Just like that, and it should pop apart. So now we have our overload. Now the overload has a couple of cool things about it. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna show you the, it again has a, has some contacts on it right here. These, these four right here, one, two, three, four, and these three down here. Now these three are gonna be used for that T1 and those L, or that T1 or L1 coming in, whichever way you'd like to put it. These ones up here are just a regular contact. You can use this so if you ever needed to, um, say, turn on a light if this went on or turn off a light or something like that. Now, this little buzzer or this, this little screw right here actually adjusts how much load it takes before it pops. And then we have our reset and our trip. So if we wanted to actually take it and trip it to see if it's working, we would go ahead and we push this little guy and then we could hit this button to reset it. All right? So, and that's the overload. It's kind of like, you know, a fuse or a fuse or a breaker for a motor. All right, now we got to our meat of this discussion. So I wanna go ahead and I'm gonna point out some terminals. We have the first two we have are right here. This is our A1, our A2. That's gonna energize the coil. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna actually pull this one apart for you guys so you can see that coil. And this one's really neat because it's actually connected. Then we have our L1, two, three. And then we have our T1, T2, T3 right there. All right, and then you can see that this would be, we would use this button right here. It's not really a button, but it's, it's kind of a button. I don't know if you can see it. To go ahead and manually depress the coils or switches inside. Some of these will have a really nice uh, schematic on the side of them. Ours doesn't. Now, if there was a schematic on the side of that contactor, it would look like this, okay? And it, this might be backwards, I'm not, I'm not totally sure just because uh, of the way the switches are. You're gonna have open contacts, one, two, three, and these would be your, your L1, L2, and L3 coming in. And then you would have your normally open switches and that, that would go to the, let's say T1, T2, and T3 here. Now, what's the thing that's gonna trip it is that coil. So that's gonna be that dotted line coming down to pull all those switches, okay? And then we're gonna go all the way down to that coil or that electromagnet. Usually they're drawn like this. They're usually kind of a, I think they'll do them in half and sometimes the one side will be shaded. And then off the other side is gonna be the wires that are connecting that or uh, energizing that coil. So those ones will be an A1 and an A2. Like I said, I'm not sure if it would be flipped around or what, but this uh, this would look like this. This looks a heck of a lot like uh, some of the schematics that might be used in a, uh, a relay or something like that. And again, a contactor is just a big relay. It just can handle a lot, a lot more voltage. But I wanna go ahead and I'm gonna tear this thing apart. So right here, there's a little a flip latch. We're gonna get, get underneath that. 
And then on this side, I don't know if you guys can see it, but there's these two little detents right here and right here. We're just gonna go ahead and press one of them and kind of push it up at the same time. Okay, perfect. Now we have all of our pieces, okay? So right here, it makes up that switching mechanism. So all of this is doing is, just like your auxiliary contact, is you can pull it in and out, and it's connecting this from this terminal to this terminal. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna throw my multimeter on it so that I can show you that right now. So what I've done is I've just hooked up my two my two leads off of my uh, multimeter here, and I just set it back to, oops, I got it says the wrong thing. We're gonna go ahead and set it here, hit the range button, no, not range, select, huh? Okay, select button till it shows our little siren here. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and should be able to pull this back and it should go off, see that? So I'm gonna show this from the side. I'm just pulling it back and it's making contact through there. It takes a lot of pressure. It's actually kind of hard to do with my fingers. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and let's move on. I wanna show you the coil. All right, so now the next thing is, this is our spring and all this is used for is to push those contacts away if the coil is not energized. What we, what we have next, if we actually slide this piece apart, is this is our magnetic coil. So when you energize this, it creates that electric pull that pulls this in right here. And you can see that this is a big steel core. So that way it pulls that in and kind of gets those contacts to touch. You can, the cool thing about this one that not all of them have is that when you pull it apart, you can actually see which, or which terminals will connect to this coil. And again, that's the A1, A2. Almost always on a relay or a contactor, A1, A2 will uh, go to this coil of wires to pull in whatever switches you're trying to work with. So, and then just down here, there's another uh, iron core down in here, all right? So that's kind of the basic overview of what's inside of a contactor. So to illustrate how a contactor works, I wanted to go ahead and get it set up on the board. Now this is an exact replica of lab 3-1. So you're gonna be able to build this and um, actually kind of go through this like I am. So as you can see, we're coming from a 24 volts DC over here, coming up through the contactor. Again, those three contacts and then out up to the lights. And then we have one uh, neutral going back over here to the, the power strip. So if I take it and I press this center down, the three lights light up and that's, and that's how it works. So I'm gonna get some close up views of that. So these guys right up here are your incoming power. This would be the power coming out up to the lights. And like I said, you can press this to manually to make those contacts close. So I wanted to get a shot where I was just showing you the coil being hooked up. So I got 24 volts here coming into the coil. And when I depress one of our buttons, you can see that the coil pulls that uh, contactor together. 